Video presented to you by Unique to Billions e-learning. Please subscribe it and press the bell icon. We know the accumulated amount for a simple interest case at the end of period n is given by the equation p into 1 plus nr. And for compound interest case, it will be p into 1 plus r, the whole raised to n. If p is equal to 1, this equation becomes 1 plus nr and this equation becomes 1 plus r the whole raised to n. What this equation says about? This equation says that if an investment of 1 is made for n period, then the accumulation will be 1 plus nr in the case of simple interest and 1 plus r the whole raised to n at the case of compound interest. These factors we call it as the accumulation factors. Let us consider T1 is the time of investment T2 be the future time at which we have to find the accumulated amount then we can say T2 is greater than T1 then a general denotation for accumulation factor is A T1 T2 if T2 minus T1 is equal to n then we can write the accumulation factor a t1 t2 is equal to 1 plus n r for simple interest case and 1 plus r the whole raise to n for compound interest case so we got an equation here for accumulation factors for simple interest and compound interest where n is the number of periods and r is the rate of interest. Now what will be the accumulation at period n for principle p? It will be simply p into the accumulation factor because for 1 it will be the accumulation factor therefore for p it will be p into the accumulation factor. So, if we know accumulation factor, we can easily find out the accumulated amount at time t2. For examination purposes, a table is provided most cases and if in that table, the accumulation factor is given for different interest cases and periods. You can easily found that values and multiply with the principal amount you will get the accumulated amount at time t2 for an investment at time t1. In some books r the rate of interest is denoted as i and instead of principal p they usually denote c. So in such cases the equations becomes a t1 t2 is equal to 1 plus ni or 1 plus i the whole raised to n and accumulated amount the equation is c into a t1 t2. So, do not confuse with uh, if r is given or i is given the equation will be this. In other words we can say the accumulation factor is the proportion of the amount we got at the end of period T2 
to the amount we invested. That we got from this equation. So if I write t is equal to c into a t1 t2, then what will be a t1 t2? a t1 t2 will be simply t by c, where t is the accumulated amount at the end of t2 divided by the amount at the end of t1. You can easily calculate the value of the accumulation factor if the values of the accumulated amounts at t2 and the amount at t1 is given. Another denotation you need to understand here is if t1 is equal to 0 and t2 is equal to n, the accumulation factor of 0 n is denoted normally as a n. So, if somewhere you are seeing it is a n, it will be simply a 0 n. Now, we will do one numerical for the accumulation factor. An investor deposit dollar one thousand in a bank account that accumulates to dollar one thousand five hundred in three years. Calculate the accumulation factor A03 to calculate simple interest and compound interest rate per annum for this investment. So two questions are here. First, we need to find the accumulation factor A03 and second to find simple interest rate and compound interest rate for this investment. For this, we know the equation A T1 T2 is equal to T by C. If I write A03, then it will be the investment I made at time 0 which is given as 1000 and the accumulated amount after 3 years it is given as 1500. So, the accumulation factor A03 is 1.5. So, we solve first question. The second question asks to calculate simple interest rate and compound interest rate per annum for this investment. First we will calculate for simple interest and then we will do it for compound interest case. We know for simple interest case the equation for accumulation factor is given by A T1 T2 is equal to 1 plus N i where n is the number of periods and i is the rate of interest. And in this case we know n is equal to 3 and t1 is 0. So, a 0 3 is equal to 1 plus 3 i. We already calculated the value of a 0 3 which is 1.5 is equal to 1 plus 3 i. Therefore, i is equal to 1.5 minus 1 divided by 3 that is equal to 0.5 divided by 3 that is equal to 0.1667. In case of compound interest, we can write the formula as a t1 t2 is equal to 1 plus i the whole raised to n. Here also n is equal to 3. So, I can write A03 is equal to 1 plus i the whole q. Substituting the value of A03, I can write 1.5 is equal to 1 plus i the whole q. I can write this as 1 plus i is equal to cube root of 1.5. 
or i is equal to cube root of 1.5 minus 1. The value is 0.1447. If I write this in percentage, it will be 16.67 percentage and this will be 14.47 percentage. Here, the simple interest rate will be more than the compound interest. Why? Because to achieve 500 as an interest, for simple interest, it requires more rate than compound interest because in simple interest, only principal earns interest. In compound interest, interest also earns interest. So, less rate will give more value in compound interest case. If you are not yet subscribed to our channel, please subscribe it. Also, please like and share this video.